Previously, the European scientists, they believed that the Earth was the center of the solar system and the universe. And all the planets, as well as the moon and the sun, it revolved around the Earth. This was called as geocentrism. And this was believed since the time of Ptolemy in the 2nd century BC till as late as 16th century until Nicholas Copernicus in 1512 he propounded the heliocentric theory of the planetary motion and he said it is the sun which is the center of the solar system and all the planets as well as the earth it revolves around the sun and later on a German scientist by the name of Johannes Kepler in 1609 he wrote in his book by the name Astronomia Novia that not only do the planets and the earth they revolve around the sun but they also rotate about their own axis and when I was in school I passed my school in 1982 about more than 25 years back there I too read that the planets and the earth they revolve around the sun and the planets and the earth they rotated about their own axis and the whole solar system also in the galaxy it revolved including the sun but the sun did not rotate about its own axis in this context the sun was stationary but when I read the verse of the Quran in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 33, which says, Huwa lazi khalaqal wa nahar. It is Allah who has created the night and the day. Wa shamsa wal kamar, the sun and the moon. Kullun fi falaki yasbuhun, each one traveling in orbit with its own motion. So the Quran says, the sun and the moon, besides revolving, they also rotate about their own axis. The Arabic word used here is yasbuhun derived from the Arabic word sabaha which describes the motion of a moving body if I use this Arabic word yasbaha for a person who is moving on the floor it will not mean that he's rolling it will mean he's either walking or running if I use the same word for a person in the water it will not mean he's floating it will mean he's swimming similarly when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the same word for a celestial body it does not mean that it is flying in the air it means it is moving along with its own rotation it is rotating about its own axis so Quran says the sun and the moon besides revolving it also rotates about its own axis and today science has discovered that even the sun rotates since we can't see the sun directly you get blinded if you see directly if you have an equipment and have the image of the sun on a tabletop we find that there are spots in the sun and it takes about 25 days for the spots to complete one rotation indicating that the sun takes approximately 25 days to complete one rotation imagine when I was in school I was taught the sun was stationary it didn't rotate about phone axis and the Quran mentioned 14 years ago that it rotates and now alhamdulillah most of the schools have incorporated that the sun also rotates further we read in the Quran it's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Yaseen, chapter number 36, verse number 40. It is not permitted for the sun to overtake the moon, nor the night to outstrip the day. The moon and the sun. Kulun fi falaki yas bahoon, each one traveling in orbit with its own motion. Now the scientists say that the orbit of the sun and the moon is different. So there is no question of the sun overtaking the moon. That's what the Quran says. And today the scientists they tell us that the sun is moving in a direction in the universe to a particular fixed direction which is called as the solar apex. In the constellation of Hercules also known as Alpha Lyra at a speed of 12 miles per second. And today the scientists they tell us that the sunlight we have is due to a chemical reaction which is taking place since billions of years. And one day 
this chemical reaction will cease and so will the light of the sun cease to exist and so will the life on this earth cease to exist but the scientists say it will take another few billion years Quran gives a similar message in Surah Yaseen chapter number 36 verse number 38 that the sun is running its course for a period determined to a place determined the Arabic word used here is mustakar which has two meanings either it means for a period determined or it means to a place determined and today science says that the sun is moving to a particular spot known as solar apex and it will exist for a particular time period so both the meanings of mustakar to a place determined and for a period determined according to science is perfect imagine Quran mentions this 1400 years ago when I was in school I had learned that there are three types of matter solid liquid and gas and previously the scientists believed that the space outside the astronomical systems in the galaxy it was vacuum Lately, the scientists have discovered that there are bridges of matter in the interstellar space. It's not vacuum. And it is called as plasma. And they say this matter is in a form of gaseous matter, which has equal number of positive ions as well as electrons. And the Quran mentions 1400 years ago in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 59. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created the heavens and the earth as well as things in between it. So Quran says there is matter in between the heavens and the earth. Which today science, they say that this plasma can be considered as the fourth type of matter. Today science also tells us that the atmosphere of the earth, it acts like a filter and prevents the harmful radiations from outer space to come onto the surface of the earth. It prevents the X-rays and the ultraviolet rays to reach the surface of the earth, which is very important for the sustenance of life. If this filter of the earth's atmosphere wasn't there, then life would not exist on the face of the earth. The Quran says in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 32, that we have made the sky as a protected ceiling we have made the heavens the Arabic word is Samawat we have made the heavens that is the sky as a canopy well guarded today science has come to know that this protected ceiling without this life would have ceased to exist on the face of the earth it was in 1925 a very famous scientist by the name of Edwin Hubble and a famous astronomer he said that the galaxies are receding that means the universe is expanding the Quran mentioned 14 years ago in Surah Dharyat chapter number 51 verse number 47 that we have created the vastness of space the Arabic word Mosyun means vastness or the expanding universe the Quran mentions 14 years ago that the universe is expanding which we have come to know recently 80 years back, 90 years back and according to Stephen Hawkins who is a very famous scientist he writes in his book The Brief History of Time he says that the discovery of the expanding universe is the greatest discovery of the century which is mentioned in the Quran 14 centuries before there may be skeptics or some non-Muslims who will say it is nothing great that the Quran speaks about astronomy since the Arabs were very well advanced in the field of astronomy. I do agree with them that the Arabs were advanced in the field of astronomy. But I would like to remind them it was centuries after the Quran was revealed that the Arabs advanced in the field of astronomy so it is from the Quran that the Arabs learned about astronomy and not the vice versa 
And there were many things about astronomy mentioned in the Quran which the Arabs didn't speak about and which we have come to recently.